I am loving this smoothie so much these days. Welcome Ari Furniture family to this week's video and welcome to those of you who have just joined us. To those of you who are new, my name is Tate and I'm an environmental lawyer. Here on this channel we talk about all things law, environmental law, climate justice, environmental justice. We've also started to talk about health and well-being and how to take care of ourselves because as young professionals it is something that we really need to do. It is very important for us to take care of ourselves while we chase our careers. If you have been here for a while you know that we are starting off on this wellness journey where we are basically learning how to take care of ourselves as young professionals. Mind body and so obviously that is too broad and it still needs to be broken down but it's a journey so you don't start with everything so right now I'm doing this series about how to actually start a wellness journey in my last video I did touch on two important aspects when you're starting off your wellness journey and the first one was about having a reason you need to establish your why if you don't know why you're doing this it's not going to work. The second thing being, you need to change your mindset. Once you've established your why, it is very important to align that reason to your mindset. If you're still thinking in the exact same way as before, then it's gonna be very difficult for you to implement this wellness program that you wanna start, okay? Your mind has to be aligned to the goals that you have. If you haven't watched that video, please do go and watch it so that you catch up on where we are and you also actually get more information about the first two steps in starting your wellness journey. So today we are going to continue with part two of how to start your wellness journey. And the first thing I want to talk about is making wellness a lifestyle. I know it's kind of like, but how do I do that? You know, it's easy. How do you live your life? Honestly, every single thing that you do every single day is part of your lifestyle. If you want to start a wellness journey, you've got to learn how to incorporate those goals into your normal daily routine. Incorporate your wellness goals into your schedule in a way that works for you. So personally, one of my wellness goals is to actually be fit. I've discussed this in my previous video that I'm just doing this so that I have movement in my body. My body is not idle, my organs are healthy, and I'm just putting in at least the minimum that is required to stay healthy, okay? I don't want to hurt, I don't want to be strained, I don't want to feel any tight muscles when I'm moving or doing certain things. That's why I've set this goal for myself. But I've also recently realized that I'm a morning person, okay? I know it sounds weird me saying I've realized it. I'm saying this because it took me a while to actually admit that I'm a morning person. I always used to say, I hate the mornings, I'm not a morning person, I want to sleep in. But actually, I've realized that I am more active in the morning. In terms of my wellness goals, I've realized that the best time to do a lot of things for myself is in the morning because that's when I'm the most active. I haven't been distracted by a lot of things yet. So what I've done is to sort of like create a routine that would then work for me. I put in my fitness goals in that as well. So I know that if I don't move my body in the morning, chances that I'm going to do it later in the day are not as high. I would rather do it in the morning the first thing when I wake up because if I don't do it then and the day progresses, I'm probably not going to do it. And this is because I am very much a morning person. By the time you get to 2 p.m., 3 p.m. in the afternoon, I just want to nap. I'm tired, okay? And by the time you get to 8 p.m. in the evening, I'm just down. I want to sleep, right? So if I don't do certain things at a certain time, then I'm just not going to do it. So when it comes to your wellness schedule as well, whatever your wellness is going to be. Okay, one thing I want to make clear here is that wellness is so much broad. It's not just about the fitness. It's not just about working out and um, what you're doing at the gym. It's so much broader than that. It's about your mind. What are you feeding your mind? Um, what do you do to just breathe and make sure that you're focusing on positive things? It's about the finances because sometimes 
you are stressed and it's not even about your job it's literally about your finances or it's literally about the people who are surrounding you that are stressing you so wellness is so much broader i think i'm going to do a separate video of what wellness actually is so that we know what it is and look at it holistically but the examples that i'm using right now are just sort of like common examples that are easier to understand as we go through this i mean we are starting so one of the things to do is to just start with the simple things that people can understand that's why i'm constantly referring to things like fitness and healthy eating but i need you to understand that it's so much more than that so when you're talking about making it your lifestyle make it part of the things that you do every day when you wake up in the morning what's the first thing you do your routine doesn't have to be exactly the same way as my routine you have to structure it in your own way like what works for you it doesn't have to be like mine sit down with yourself and actually think these things that i want to do how do i incorporate them into my daily life right if it's reading a book what is the best time for me to actually read this book one thing i'll advise against is to try and do too much at the same time when i started this journey i tried to do that i was listening to a lot of people talking about this is what you need to do you need to spend 20 minutes on this 20 minutes on that 20 minutes on that and it was just too overwhelming for me so i eventually had to sit down with myself and say this is actually what i want to do for myself okay and I am most active in the morning, which means that I can actually do these things in the morning before I start anything else. So then I had to think what works for me, what brings me joy as a person. If I'm doing this, how can I do it? So that's how you kind of have to structure it to make it a natural way of life for yourself. Don't force things. If you're doing something and you are literally forcing yourself to do it every single day, then you have to reevaluate that thing. Why are you doing it? Okay. Did someone else tell you to do this? Is this something that you really want to do? Or if it's something that you want to do, do you have to do it in the way that you are doing it? So personally, I hate the gym. Honestly, I admire people who wake up every single day and go to the gym. I have nothing against it. It's just something I can't do for myself. Okay. I don't see myself doing that. But because I still want to move my body, I knew that if I was going to say I'm going to be going to the gym every day, that was going to be a very hard thing for me to do. I would have found reasons to not go to the gym, fill up my schedule in such a way that there is no gym time. Okay. So that goal was not going to last. But I had to think, okay, I really want to make wellness and fitness something that i do something that's just a part and parcel of my life so how then do i do it without doing things that i hate so i had to think okay if i actually just buy a yoga mat and i keep it in my home i wake up every day i use youtube or all these other apps that are there that provide exercises to exercise that could be a better way for me to actually do that and the more i started to do that the easier it actually became so all those things also they start with a mental change. You actually have to talk yourself into it a bit before you start, like have a conversation with yourself. Why am I doing this? Okay. Why is it important to me that I would do this kind of thing? And then you actually then have to discuss with yourself, how am I going to, because at the end of the day, remember that you know yourself better than anybody else. So someone else can structure things for you but if you're not that person if it's not aligned to who you are it's not going to work because you can't force certain things so yeah you have to start mentally have that discussion with yourself mentally it goes back to what i was saying in the first video that you need to change your mindset okay change how you think all those things are part and parcel of each other if your mindset is not yet attuned to this it's not going to work so you kind of have to say to yourself this is how i want to live now and tell your mind, this is how I want to live now. This is what my life is supposed to be like. And as the more you tell yourself that, and the more you also do the things in action. You know, guys, it's one thing to say something to yourself, and it's another to actually do it. Your mind is not going to be reprogrammed if you're just saying things and not doing it, okay? It also needs that action to sort of like see you then saying, okay, buddy, remember what we said the other day that we are going to be doing this thing? Right now is the time to do it. So let's do it. So the more you do that, the easier it also becomes. Another thing that you have to do when you're trying to make wellness a lifestyle is to actually be consistent. 
okay be consistent in everything that you've set out to do keep doing it all the time don't do things today and then you're gonna wait another two weeks to get back to that thing because then it's not a part of your life okay it's not something that you do something that you do it's literally those little habits that you do every single day when you know yourself better so what are those things that every single day of your life you are doing that those things they are part of your lifestyle so when you're talking about incorporating wellness into your lifestyle that's kind of how you also have to do it and you need to be consistent with it because you're very consistent in everything else so why can't you be consistent in taking care of yourself so you need to be consistent you need to be committed you need to incorporate everything that you set out to do into your daily life because that's when it's even more easier for you to do it always have positive emotions when you're doing those things don't dread to do it so when you set a goal for yourself don't be like oh my gosh i have to do this like no okay the minute you're gonna do that you're gonna hate this thing remember you're doing this for yourself you're doing something today that your future self is gonna thank you for so you need to make sure that whatever you are doing right now, you have to understand that it may be hard to do this right now. The sacrifice may be hard to do right now, but my future self is going to thank me later. You have to remember that change doesn't happen overnight. Okay, you have to be very patient with this journey. There are moments when things are going to be so hard, okay, when you're not going to be able to do this, but you have to realize that if I'm consistent, if I'm constantly showing up and I'm repeating all those things every single day, I'm doing what I've said I'm going to do. Even if it's a small thing that I'm doing, then as time goes on, it just becomes so easy for you to do it. And then before you know it, it just becomes a lifestyle for you. It just becomes something that's a part of you. And then the next thing that you also have to be mindful of when you start off your wellness journey is that you have to fall in love with you in the process. Remember, a wellness journey is a process, right? And in that process, what you are doing is actually for you and not somebody else. I wake up at 5 a.m. and I spend at least two hours just doing something for me, something that I like, something that I know that if I do this, then the rest of my day is going to go well, okay? So, you are literally feeding into yourself. So, during that process, you have to make sure that the more you do this thing, every single time you do something for you, you are falling in love with yourself. The problem that a lot of us have is that we expect love from other people out there, but we have that same love within us to show it to ourselves. That same love that you are giving to others, give it also to yourself. You deserve that love and it starts with you. You can't expect somebody else to love you a certain way when you can't love yourself in that same way. So you start with the example. When you start off this journey, remember, you need to fall in love firstly with the process because if you hate the process, then it's not going to help. You need to think about the things that you naturally enjoy, the things that are easier for you to do, the things that are not daunting for you to do. Another thing I would say then about falling in love with you and this process is that you need to appreciate each and every moment. Take the time to appreciate each and every step that you take, no matter how small it is. I have days when I'm just really so tired and I cannot get out of bed and my alarm rings at five and I'm just like, no, no, 30 more minutes. But I know that the more I say, oh, 10 more minutes, five more minutes, 30 more minutes, then I'm just not going to do what I want to do. So I have to say to myself, okay, baby girl, you've set these goals for yourself and this is why you set those goals. So what is that one thing that you can do right now? Just one thing. And then when I think about that, then I have to say, okay, I, I don't know if I'm really ready to just get out of bed and be on my mat right now. But maybe I could just journal what's on my mind right now. So while I lay in bed, let me just take out my journal. And then I journal whatever's on my mind. 
And I realized that as soon as I'm done journaling, my mind is ready for the next thing. And then that's how I move and move and move. Before you know it, I've done everything that I need to do before I start work. Okay. But I still go back to that moment and I literally appreciate the fact that that day, it was so hard for me, but I decided to do this one small thing that helped me to kickstart my day. So it doesn't even have to be a big thing, okay? Days are gonna be very different. There are days when you're literally going to be feeling this. There are days when you're not going to be feeling it. There are days that just start on a high note, you know, you start off in overdrive. You know, we are working, so you never know what's gonna happen at 6 a.m. Some client calls you, they're in jail or whatever, like you need to move. But it's literally just saying, what can I do then in the short amount of time that I have? What can I do today when I'm feeling, I'm not feeling myself, you know, I'm really feeling off, but what is that one thing I can do for myself today it could be taking a walk okay it doesn't even have to be anything hectic and it doesn't even have to be a one hour walk it could be a 10 minute walk it could literally be calling a friend to say i just need to talk to someone it could be writing your thoughts down it could be just getting out of bed honestly getting out of bed is an action let's be honest it's an action that is very important to a lot of people because the more you stay in bed and you're already feeling off then everything is just going to be off for you. So just that one step of you getting out of bed, making up your bed, taking a shower. So take the time to appreciate the smallest things that you do for yourself. If it's literally, oh my gosh, I don't know how I was going to take a shower today, but I am so grateful that I managed to get out of that bed and I went and I took a shower take that in guys take take that moment in and appreciate it because it's something that you've done for yourself and the more you start to appreciate yourself even for the smallest of things the more you're going to start to see yourself for who you are and the more you're going to fall in love with yourself so basically you need to thank yourself for the things that you do for yourself no matter how small they are another thing you have to do is to speak positive things about yourself a lot of us, we have this thing where we are constantly focusing on the negative things about us. I'm guilty of it. I have moments where I'm literally just thinking negative things and I have to now remind myself, but wait, for the past five minutes, all you've been saying is negative things about yourself. Is there nothing positive about yourself that you can say? Honestly, I know a lot of people like, I don't want to praise myself, whatever, guys, Speak positive things about yourself. Don't go out there and expect someone else to say positive things about you when you can't speak positive things about yourself. Because the truth is, even if someone else is going to say to you, if you don't believe it in your heart, if you've never said anything like that to yourself, it's not going to stick. Okay, it's never going to stick. It's just going to come through here and go out here because you don't believe it. You've never said it yourself. So if someone literally says to you, you are so beautiful, but deep down within you, you don't believe you're beautiful. And every single day you're waking up and you're telling yourself, I look like a cow. Even if someone else is going to tell you, you are beautiful, you're never going to believe that person. But if you're speaking positive things to yourself, you're literally telling yourself, I can do this. I'm good enough. I'm beautiful. I'm powerful. I can do this. The more you tell yourself that, the more you're going to start to believe it. The more it's going to register in your mind, the more it's going to become a part of you. And the more you're going to fall in love with yourself. It is very important to speak positive things about yourself. And not just to speak them, to even think positive things about yourself. Don't be spending time thinking negative things about yourself because those things become who you are remember what you think is what you are so if you're constantly thinking bad things negative things about yourself you become that so change what you say to yourself change what you think about yourself and when you do that it's going to make it easier for you to fall in love with yourself and this is part of the wellness journey this is part of what it is about learning to be the best version of yourself learning to take care of yourself holistically thinking about yourself as a person who is 
poor, a person who loves and appreciates themselves, a person who's just full of joy, peace, a kind person, a person who's also in touch with themselves. You are able to call yourself out, you're able to catch yourself, you're able to check in with yourself and not just say, mm, we did that, but you know what? We can do better next time. So honestly just be positive and i'll say be your biggest fan and motivator one of the things that is so difficult for a lot of people me included sometimes is to be your biggest fan we always wait for someone else to come and cheer us on we always wait for someone else to be like yay you can do this but have you ever thought about motivating yourself actually clapping your hands for yourself every single time you do something that you know is good for you. I think that the most important thing that you can do for yourself as you start this wellness journey is to literally be mindful of the things that you do when nobody else is watching. Be your biggest cheerleader. Be your biggest motivator. Literally tell yourself that, what would my friend say to me right now? <laughs> if my friend was to call me and they tell me this is their situation, what would I tell them? And if you can tell someone else that, if you can cheer for someone else, why can't you do it for yourself? Why do you have to wait for someone else to cheer you on? You can do this for yourself. So be your biggest fan. Because when you are like that, you're going to seek less and less of people's approval. You're going to start seeking less and less of people's validation. You're going to become more in touch with yourself because you see yourself for who you are. And that is very important. And you're going to realize that the more you're going to do this, the more your confidence is literally going to start peaking and it's going to boost your confidence. You're going to be more confident in yourself. You're going to be more confident in the things that you do. And you're going to be more sure of yourself because you're constantly in touch with yourself another thing that i'll say here is that you need to be very realistic and see yourself for who you are don't try to set goals that are just too much for you okay so before you start off this journey you need to have a check in with yourself where am i as a person right now okay what are the things that i like about myself right now what do i not like about myself right now and how can i change that so you check in with yourself. Be very realistic. Be true to who you are. Don't set unrealistic goals, goals that have got nothing to do with who you are. You see somebody else doing their thing and now you want to copy that. Don't do that. It's not going to work for you. So be very realistic and in touch with who you are. That you need to be very kind and gracious to yourself. This is the ultimate way of showing love to yourself. You know, don't be too hard on yourself. Personally, I'm guilty of this. I have perfectionist tendencies and sometimes it works to my advantage but other times it doesn't. A lot of times because I'm thinking of perfection, I struggle with a lot of things. I start to overthink it. I start to overcomplicate things and that's not even how you have to do things. So remember a wellness journey is about progression and not perfection. You need to be very kind and gracious to yourself. There are some days when things are just going to be so hard, okay? I have days where I step onto my mat and my body is just not doing it. My body is just like, no, I can't do, I can't do that move today. And I'm like, are you crazy? We did this yesterday. Like, we did this. We were doing it. Why can't you do it today? But I'm like, nah, today I can't. Today I can't. And I have to listen to it. And I can't berate myself for it because I have to be honest with myself. Okay, my body was not able to do this thing today. Is it because I'm tired? Is it because that I need to rest this, get to something else and then come back to it? So you need to sort of like reflect as well. Be very gracious with yourself. Be gentle. Um, do what you can do. On any other given day, do what you can do. I have schedules where I literally have 10 things that I want to do. But on certain days, I just can't do all those 10 things. Honestly, maybe I can do five or three. The whole point is you have to do something, okay? When you set a goal, you can't just set it and not do nothing. You have to do something. So you sit with yourself and you say, today, honestly, the only thing I can do is read a book. That's all I can do. And that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Tomorrow is another day. You can start again with all those 20 things that you wanted to do. But if your body is telling you that today we are tired, we, we can't do this, then 
you gotta listen to it okay you've got to be kind you can't be too hard on yourself and think that you're a failure because you set this goal that you're gonna be spending two hours at the gym but today you did not spend two hours you're only able to do 30 minutes because your damn body was tired guys be very kind to yourself the fact that you even did that 30 minutes is a good thing it's a small thing that you did for your body and it reaped those benefits even though it wasn't the two hours that you were hoping for so back to my point again appreciate every single little thing that you do for yourself thank yourself even for the smallest things that you do for yourself be very kind to yourself don't berate yourself don't be too hard on yourself and as i'm saying this i'm also saying it to myself because mm, they are days okay they are days so yeah guys we've reached the end of this video i really hope that this was very informative and you love this video as we start off our wellness journey we need to remember that First thing we have to do is to establish our why. If we don't have a reason, it's not going to work. We need to reprogram our mind because if our mind is not tuned to our goals, then it's not going to work. We need to be aligned. And then we also need to make wellness our lifestyle because if it's not a lifestyle, then it's not going to work for us. If it's not part and parcel of how we do things every single day, then it's not going to work for you. And then the last thing is for us to fall in love with ourselves in this journey. That's why it's called self-love and those are the little things you can do in order to accomplish that. So yeah guys, I really hope that you are also taking care of yourselves wherever you are. If you're on a wellness journey too, I'd really love to hear your journey, what's happening, what are you struggling with, what have you managed to achieve, how is it going, I want to hear it all. And if you liked this video, please click the like button down below and share it with others. If you're watching this video and you have reached this far and you're not yet subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell so that you're notified every single time that I upload a video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay true, keep fighting, and keep the air clean.